It's a very difficult situation that you have to deal with. If you look at, for example, you know, a unit like Espresso or Nespresso, how much are higher prices and inflationary pressures hurting you there? When are you expecting it to get easier? Yeah, thanks, Francine. Glad to be back. And um, look, let's start with the strength of 21, because as you said, the growth was phenomenal. And um, we had warned all throughout the year that uh, with rising input costs, there was going to be a slight dampening effect on operating margins. It's very minute. Um, and so at the end of the day, I think we managed it well because we prepared for it early. We had a good hedging strategy. And also, we saw lots of internal operating efficiencies. Now, having said that, looking at 22, inflationary pressures continue to rise. And um, so it's a safe bet that inflation will hit us harder in 22 than in 21. All of the internal work continues, but we also have to resort to responsible pricing. Pricing is easier mm -hmm. at the premium end of the segment. So think about Nespresso, as you mentioned, than at the value end of the segment. But um, overall, I think across the board, we will have to do responsible pricing in order to offset inflation. And uh, I think yeah. that's well understood by retail partners and consumers. So, uh, Mark, talk to me a little bit. First of all, we have a chart that really, you know, brings it home, this inflationary pressure across the world. And this is a UN World Food Price Index, which we put together that really shows it going higher versus their 2011 peak. When you look at that and you say that actually there's almost, you know, no place in the company that's exempt from inflation, where do you expect it to, to be easier? Or when do you expect it to be easier? 15 months, 18 months, will it get easier in terms of these pressures? Yeah, look, it was always clear that at the turning point, when inflation starts to hit, there was going to be a time lag on whatever pricing you're able to do because there's contractual arrangements with retailers. You can't just jack up prices the next day. We had warned about that, um, and uh, this is exactly uh, how it came about. And at some point then, one of two things is going to happen. Either we settle into a regular inflationary cycle and in that case you can adjust your pricing more proactively and then that compression on the margin should end mm -hmm. or it turns out within a year's time or so that this inflation of 21 and 22 in hindsight was only a blip and in that case the margin pressure should should also ease so midterm yeah. we continue to be optimistic when it comes to our operating margin this is what we underlined in our midterm outlook today, where we expect a full return to the Nestle model of moderately improving operating margins. It just for 2021, 22, there was no escaping from that temporary compression. Um, Mark Schneider, give me a sense of where exactly you're hoping to be able to raise prices without hurting the man the most. So I know you're, you're looking at moderate increases, but for example, going back to Nespresso, you know, it's, I guess, by legacy, always been kind of protected by any price increases. Can it go 4% higher, 5% or double digit in terms of price hikes? Yeah. So we generally stay away from pinpointing specific products or brands and geographies um, here from the center. So uh, the general statement is that uh, on the more premium side of things, it's easier to do. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. clearly, when you have a direct to consumer model, it's also easier to do that uh, because whenever you have retail partners, of course, you have to sit down for negotiation and you have to wait till the next reset date. Um, but I think the inflationary pressures are such that across the board, you will have to take uh, moderate increases and responsible increases. Uh, we are particularly responsible in our pricing activities in emerging markets because there we know that, of course, the ability to pay is also very much governed by uh, disposable incomes and uh, yeah. daily cash incomes. Um, I, I know, Mark, that your ice cream joint venture with Fernary is doing very well. Any plans to IPO that? So this is a wonderful joint venture that we started in 2016. We enlarged on it in 2020 by adding the U.S. business. And so going forward, it gives us full optionality, but we have not disclosed any specific plans yet. But the business is just doing absolutely wonderfully. I mean, any plans to buy anything? I know you know you have said in the past that you were possibly looking at acquiring companies once you got rid of some of the things that you wanted to get rid of, some of the disposals that have been announced. So are you ready to buy? And if yes, does inflation make it easier or harder? Yeah. So we have given uh, a portfolio update today. When you look back over the last five years, we've done 85 transactions. 
we swapped out about 20% of our revenue base and traded up towards higher growth, more on trend um, uh, categories and brands. So mm -hmm. I think both on the buying and selling front, we've been really, really active and we continue to be very interested in adjusting our portfolio through buying and selling. Um, so there's no change from the past. We're open across the right. full spectrum of our activities and it all depends on strategic fit, cultural fit, and of course the right price. Okay, so there's nothing, Mark, to say that actually at the moment some of the valuations are expensive. There's nothing like that. Um, well, I think we benefited from high valuations in past years when we had our divestiture activities. I think insisting on full value when you divest, to me, this is part of value preservation. Mm -hmm. And we've been quite targeted when it comes to the acquisition activity. So take our acquisition of the Bountiful company in the vitamins, mm -hmm. minerals and supplement space last year. In addition to the strategic fit, I think we were widely applauded for the financial discipline there in a very reasonable multiple.